It's safe to say that these new irons from PXG are an evolution. 10 years ago, PXG entered into the world of golf club manufacturing with an ambitious plan led by the man at the top, Mr. Bob Parsons. He had one objective, make the best performing golf clubs in the world, period. Today sees the launch of Gen 7 irons and as PXG suggest, their best ever iron model to date. And in this video, I will reveal what I believe is the most unique piece of technology that these irons have that others don't. So today I'll be doing the usual, I'll have Trackman data, but I'll be more interested in how these things perform out on the course. And I'll also be answering the question that you want answering, which is, if these are the best clubs that PXG have ever made, what makes them so special? That is without doubt my secret weapon, which I will be revealing later on in the video. But I also want to tell you about what I think is the key piece of technology in PXG irons that other brands simply don't have. And it's a big game changer. But as ever, with these reviews, we're going to start with the way these things look. And it's quite a different look for me and a move from the general sort of aesthetic that we've become used to with PXG. And that's because there's the nuts and bolts, as I used to call them, have disappeared from the previous generations and we're only left with that center weight. And it's an interesting change and I think it's going to appeal more to the masses. It's a less Marmite look and uh, I think to the sort of traditionalists, there'll be a few that are upset, but overall this is a product that's certainly going to appeal to the masses more and a little bit more mainstream. Right, let's have another hit of one of these things because I must admit, I'm really impressed with what we've, uh, what we've tried so far. So solid off the club face. And you'll see from the data a bit later on that these things are really fiery off the face. There's also interesting uh, to note is that there's two versions that we sometimes forget about, or at least I do. The Gen 7 re um, release AP model, which is the player's model slightly more compact than the other version which is the xp and the xp or the difference between the two is purely the size and mass of each and one is aimed very much for a different player but it's very interesting this time around for me and that the xp has got a certain appeal that it wouldn't have had in the past for me personally and i think for a lot of other golfers right so before we go any further and i reveal this sort of tech story that's really interesting don't go anywhere because that is key let's just have a quick look at the data now i've tested both the xp and the p uh, in the seven iron now both of these things are let's call them hot in terms of just how far the ball travels and that's relative to the loft they're both strong lofted clubs but honestly these are seriously uh, going long and longer than i've played before the standard seven iron is sort of and standard being a p model is where i expect it to be that sort of 160 165 carry and that's sort of with a fairly easy club head speed as well and then you'll see the xp model shoots up once again and like i said yes it's relative to loft but what i like about both these models is the retaining all the other data attributes that you'd want so there's no trade-off you're not looking at a strong lofted iron that's going a long way but then is losing spin is losing descent angle is losing launch these are all doing everything that you'd want the iron to do and that's why the xp model for me is really interesting for a lot of golfers particularly who are losing a bit of club head speed so the key piece of technology is that center weight that's been around like i said for a couple of iterations and when i really learned of its importance was a few weeks ago i got custom fit and yes i've been custom fit for these irons before but i'd never noticed such a difference when we changed this weight around and that is something that I've not seen from any other manufacturer in their irons custom fit process. So where we started was in a very light club head and a very light weight in the back here. And where we ended up was at the opposite end of the scale because what, it, what we found throughout the process was not only the fact my numbers improved significantly with the heavier weight in the back there, but I all 
I also felt personally a lot more comfortable with the weight of the head and being able to feel it at the end of the shaft and through the swing and just from a personal preference perspective, then it was real improved for me, but the numbers also told the tale. And the fact that this exists to me is another reason why you have to get custom fit if you're gonna buy a set of these irons. It's obviously always been a strong point of PXG, something they've always promoted. This has been, for me, the one find that uh, I wasn't planning on doing, and that is the longer end of the bag, I asked PXD to send me a couple of irons in the XP model. And that's because in a lot of videos that I've done in the past, you'll know that I sort of dismiss the longer irons because I suggest we don't have enough club head speed to uh, cope with the stronger loft that you find at that end. And we, we just, we don't get the distance, we don't get the carry. That's been quite the opposite with this four iron. And I'm amazed at just how easy it is to play and the kind of distances that I'm getting from this thing. So for me, this time around, XP would have normally been something that is quite a bit bigger than this, to be honest with you. And it's been very off-putting. I think they've re refined the XP model significantly in its shaping and in its profile. It feels superb. And I would seriously consider and also encourage you to as well, in that longer end of the bag, wherever you start to get a little bit uncomfortable with the irons, maybe even from seven onwards, then the XP model is now a serious contender to mix up and blend the set. Because as you can see, they look identical in the bag and there's no way of knowing other than this little marking on the hosel that differentiates the two. That's better. I was a little bit tentative with the first one, a bit disappointed, I've had to have another go, and that's absolutely flown off. But it also gives me an opportunity to say something else, which I thought, if you put a four iron in a bag that is considered a game improvement iron, then it's a little bit, we might turn our nose up at it. If I was to call that um, a driving iron, then all of a sudden I'm some kind of player. It's so different the way the golfer's mentality works, and effectively they're exactly the same thing. It's a wedge in, and oh my god, that's so good. It's coming down the launch angle. I know it's a wedge, but it's coming down from so high and stopping. Oh, that's a bad bounce. Oh, no, it's a good bounce. <laughs> the one other thing that I want to talk about is something that has always been a major appeal to me in PXG irons and why I've played them for the past five years. I was first drawn to the sound and feel of a hollow bodied iron that felt so much like a traditional forged iron. And I still believe that PXG have got the best mix of that, whatever it is that's inside the magic foam that makes these feel super soft and sound so good. Majority of hollow bodied irons still have a little bit of a clicky sound to me and that isn't the case with these irons from PXG. So it's a massive thumbs up. I don't know what they do, but if it's a thing that you like forged irons, then I can assure you, this is as close as you're gonna get in a hollow bodied iron. Now is an opportune moment for me to ask that if you've liked today's video, then please consider hitting that like button. And if you want more reviews from an average golf with your club head speed, it's probably a bit more similar to yours than others, then uh, consider subscribing as well. And uh, all that kind of support is greatly appreciated. Well, that has now become my favorite club in the bag. It's a game improvement for Ryan. And I think that's been my biggest realization in the testing of these about what it is that I like so much about them. It's the performance in terms of data was superb, but out here on the course has been where I've sort of had a bit of an eye opener. One is to how good these XP model are and why I definitely look at blending the two. But just overall about the attributes that you see in data, which is a high launching ball, a potentially slightly lower spinning ball with the data that we've looked at so far. But it's always that combination between launch, spin and descent angle means that these things work out in reality. And the performance of each models has been absolutely superb. 
If the yardage is right, sit, sit. Yeah, that's a decent finish. And I am going to call it quits there. I mean, to be honest with you, everybody knows I use PXG irons. I'm a fan of their uh, technology and I've always loved what uh, the irons in particular have done. So there's no surprises when I say this is another great release from PXG. They say they're 10 years in the making and possibly the best irons they've produced so far. I would agree 100%. This is definitely a leap forward in my opinion in terms of performance. I've noticed more of a difference in the XP model than ever before. And the idea of combining the two sets would certainly be something on my agenda. And that's nothing that I've considered in the past. I love the idea of perhaps going up to seven iron in a P model, and then maybe a uh, six, five, four iron even, which I've uh, literally eradicated from the bag until this release. So that's me done. I'll leave it there. As ever, comments down below, let me know what you think. Um, on everything looks what you've heard what you've seen in terms of performance and are these on your agenda to try this year thanks for watching and i'll see you soon